Hey guys, happy Thursday. Welcome back to Writing with Miss Maxie. Today is day four. Let me share my screen so you can see what we're doing today. So writing day four, we're still on step three, read and gather evidence. And there's Herschel, everybody say hi Herschel. And if you remember from yesterday, step three is about reading and gathering evidence. It says, read your text and gather information to use in your writing. Think it through, show what you know and get ready to write. The materials you'll need today are your iReady writing books and a pencil. And our I can statements are the same as yesterday's because we're still on the same step. I can read and understand two source texts. I can locate details to use when writing. And I can identify text features, captions, headings, and callouts. Okay, we're gonna start off with a little review of yesterday. So if you'll open up to page 74 in your books and it will say step three, read and gather evidence. And if you'll recall from yesterday, we read our first source text called Unusual Homes. We learned about tree houses. We learned about houses made of bottles. And we learned about houseboats. And yesterday, I asked you to think about which one of these would you want to stay in for a weekend? if you had the chance. Which one do you think would be the most fun? So as you're keeping that in mind, we are going to answer a couple of questions just to see if we can remember what we read yesterday. So my first question for you is what do you think makes this houseboat an unusual home? Remember, unusual just means different or out of the ordinary. What makes this houseboat an unusual home? Well, you might have said it's on the water. And yeah, you're right, because my house doesn't float on the water. My house is on land. OK, that's one thing you might have said. Um, another thing you might have said is that you can fish from the porch. I don't know about you, but I can't walk out onto my porch and just start fishing. I'd have to go to a boat for that. But on this houseboat, they can just walk out there and fish anytime they want. Okay, my last question for you is, what is one difference between the types of houseboats? So if you need to read this paragraph again to figure out the answer, that's perfectly fine. We can read it together. Just as we're reading, listen for one difference between the types of houseboats. Here we go. A home that floats. Have you heard of a houseboat? It's one way to live while taking a ride on the water. Many houseboats look mostly like boats. Some houseboats stay in one place. They are tied to a dock. Other houseboats travel from place to place using powerful motors. Hmm, that sounds like a difference right there. So some are in one place and others move around. You can sit out on the porch to go fishing. You can tuck yourself into bed as the houseboat floats. You can sail on the water while you sleep. Wouldn't it be fun to stay in one of these special houses? Let's go. Okay, so hopefully you caught the difference as I was reading. Some houseboats stay in one place because they're tied to a dock and others use powerful motors to travel from place to place. All right, now let's think about some of the details that the writer included about houseboats. Can you find one detail from this paragraph about houseboats? Whisper your answer to the screen. There are lots of different um, good, correct answers here. You might've said that houseboats 
some houseboats stay in one place. That's a detail. You might have said that you can sit on the porch to go fishing. That would be another detail. Really any information about the houseboats would be a good detail. Okay, and my last question for you before we read source text number two is what does the writer think of these unusual homes and how do you know? So the writer told us about the tree houses, the house of bottles, and the houseboats. What does the writer think about these houses? And how do you know? So take a minute, look back at the passage, whisper your answer to the screen, and we'll move on. So you might have said that the writer thinks these houses are interesting because he wrote about them. If he didn't think they were interesting, do you think he would take the time to write all of this information about them? I don't think so. And how do we know what else um, tells us that the writer thinks these houses are interesting? Well, at the very end, he said, wouldn't it be fun to stay in one of these special houses? So we know that the author thinks that it would be fun to stay in one of these houses, and he thinks they're special. So those are good clues that tell us how the writer feels about the topic. Now that we've reviewed source text number one, we are turning to page 77 to look at our second source text. Page 77 should look like this. It will say source text two, and the title is what's inside. Hmm, it kind of looks like a web page, like on your computer, because it has the little X button, the minus button, the full screen button, it has a web address. So this already looks a little different than our first source text. Okay. Oh, it looks like it's a diagram. Hmm. This is using call outs to present us information. It looks like it's a house that's been like sliced in half. So we're able to see the inside. And these little um, call outs is what they're called these little sentences with lines drawn to the area that they're describing. Let's go ahead and read those and learn more information. It says, what's inside? Peek inside this tiny house on the back of a bicycle. There's a light for reading at night right here. The windows let in air and light right there and right there. There is a kitchen to prepare food the generator makes power for the light and television. There is storage to keep the home neat. The bicycle helps move the home from place to place. And the bed is way up high. All right, so let's review. What is the generator used for? What is the generator used for? That's right, the generator makes power for the light and the TV. So like sometimes when the power goes out in buildings and you can't get um, the light to turn on or uh, you can't charge your phone or anything like that, they use generators to generate power when the power is out. So since this bike is always moving around, it needs a generator to help it have power and light where it's TV on the inside. Okay, and which call out is about something few houses have? So which one of these little captions tells us um, something that's different about this house compared to the other ones that we've read about? That's right, this one about the bicycle is different than the other houses because the other houses weren't on the back of a bike. This is the only one we've read about so far that's on a bike. 
Okay, so now that we've read our second source text as a reader, we'll go back through and read it as a writer this time. And this time we're gonna be noticing um, different author moves, just like we did when we read our first source text. So thinking about if any words are in bold or how the author um, showed us information in pictures and words, all of these different author moves that get across what the author wanted to tell us. Here we go. What's inside? Peek inside this tiny house on the back of a bicycle. There's a light for reading at night. Okay, light is in bold, is bolded. So that probably means that the author wanted to draw more attention to this word. And there's also a line draw to the, drawn to the light. So I think the author wants us to connect that what they're talking about here is the light. That's the main idea of this call out. Next, the windows let in air and light. Okay, so same thing here, the windows are bolded and there's a line to the windows. There is a kitchen to prepare food. I'm noticing a pattern here. The kitchen is bolded and there's a line to the kitchen. The generator makes power for the light and television. Okay, there's the generator and it's also bolded. There is storage to keep the home neat. There's the storage. The bicycle helps move the home from place to place. And there's the bicycle. So why do you think that the author decided to use a diagram or a picture rather than just words? Why would the author want to show us this instead of just tell us about it? That's right. Maybe since bike houses aren't that common, the author wanted to show us what it would look like. Since few people have bike houses, the author wanted to be able to show us what they were describing. And it helps us have a better understanding of what it looks like. Okay, and my next question for you is why are the lines from these callouts important? Why are the lines from the callouts important? That's right. They help us connect the call out to the picture. So the light has a line to the light, windows have a line to the windows, and the same for all of these. Okay. So there is no Schoology assignment today. Um, I just want you to look at the picture again on page 77 and think about what is the coolest part of this bike home? If you, if you had a bike home, what would your favorite part be? Would it be that you could move around? Would it be that your bed is way up high? Would you have something else cool? Just imagine what your bike home would look like. And that's all I need you to do for today. So I'll see you guys tomorrow. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Bye.